difference with your company. And what it does is it creates what we call a championship culture where you attract talent. Now staff wants to stay because they love the difference that you're making. This is Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast where we ask the question, what does growth in dentistry look like to you? I'm Katie Polson, a dental hygienist and your host. Welcome to Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast. I am Katie Polson for another awesome episode with one of our amazing, actually they're a referral partner of ours, but amazing company. We're excited to have Brandon Barnum on and I'll introduce him in just a second. Before we get started, if this is your first time listening to the show, welcome, welcome. So glad to have you here. We've got a lot of other great content that you can go back and listen to. We have some deep dive episodes where we have current customers who are in our top 10% of our practices, going into their metrics and numbers and figuring out how they've done so well. So those are some really great episodes. And we have some episodes for group or DSOs and also episodes like this, like we're doing today, where we uh, tackle a problem to solve. And today we're talking about referrals. So uh, anyway, if you're, if you're new, there's lots to check out. If you have, are you if you've been around before, thank you. Thank you to our five listeners. Just kidding. <laughs> We're a little bit more than that, but I but I really am grateful. If you wouldn't mind going and rating and reviewing this podcast, it helps us out a ton. If you are a fan of Facebook and that's where you like to hang out, we'd love to have you join us in our dental intelligence community. And lastly, and not least, if you are not a current customer of dental intelligence and you would like to be one or at least see what it would look like to be in your practice, please go to get.dentalintel.com forward slash podcast to get uh, $50 when you complete a demo. That's a special giveaway for our, our listeners of the show. And that link will also be in our show notes. So without further ado, I don't want to waste any time. We have a quick 30 minutes and I don't, we've got a lot to cover. So uh, Brandon Barnum from Champion Dentist, welcome. Thank you so much for joining the show. Thank you, Katie. My pleasure to be here. Yeah. We tried to connect at Voices of Dentistry, but um, that was probably like the worst trip for me, like business-wise. It just like the the Voices of Dentistry was great. Uh, The meeting was fun, but I had just one one problem after another with my equipment. So I'm really glad this is a better, 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 better. Um, space anyway. It's a lot quieter. So glad, totally. to have, yeah. glad to have you in a space where we can actually hear you. So tell us a little bit about yourself and, and then also tell us a little bit about Champion Dentists and then raving referrals, which is what you're talking about today. Yeah, cool. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Yeah. So for me, I've been generating referrals for over 25 years. I started out in the mortgage business back in the mm-hmm. 90s and I had somebody that took me under their wing and mentored me and taught me the art and science of how to generate what I now call as raving referrals. And as a result, over my career, I've done over $500 million in transactions that we've closed by referral. And for the last 13 years, I've been building tech platforms to help people create referral partnerships Mm. and generate more referrals. My last one was called Mm refer.com. And uh, we built that to 5 million members before we exited in 2019. So with Champion Dentists, what we're doing is it's a performance-based dental consulting company. And you said we're we're actually resellers of DI and and we use it with all of our clients because it's such an incredible business metrics and visibility platform that we think everybody should understand their numbers and their KPIs. And so we use it when we go into a practice to determine if we're going to take them on as a partner. We're very selective Mm -hmm. about who we bring on because we only get paid when we help them increase their revenue. So you know, we don't take anybody on. We're very selective, but mm-hmm. we use DI to ensure that we're able to ramp their revenue and impact the KPIs that matter. Yeah, that's awesome. And we're glad, glad to have you, glad to have a solution for you to be able to do that quite easily. Um, and mm. it's awesome that you guys, um, I would say put your money where your mouth is, I guess, in the sense that, you know, if you're if they, if they get, um, if they get what they hired you for, right, then you get paid as well. That's a really awesome format and model that a lot, not a lot of consultants have out there. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, we love it because people aren't sitting there worried about, you know, paying out five or $10,000 per month to a consultant without results. Like, you know, we only get paid if we drive up your numbers, which is, in our opinion, the way it should be. Yeah, that's really cool. So tell us a little bit about, well, so we're going to dive into referrals. First of all, 
we'll let you plug the book first because I think that that okay. will help kind of set up the setup and then we'll we'll also at the end. But um, yeah, Brandon wrote a book. If you're watching on YouTube, it's Raving Referrals for Dentists. It comes out February 22nd, 22, just in a little bit. Um, actually, if you're listening to this, it's two days ago. So um, just barely it's been released. And um, and in it, we're going to talk about what is in the book. So um, how long have you been working on that book? Tell us a little bit about that process. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, this was my first book, Raving Referrals, and this came out uh, November 11th of 2021. So mm. over a year ago. And in that book, and, and so the actual book writing process is laborious. I don't <laughs> recommend it to anybody. <laughs> there is a way easier process than writing every single word yourself, which is what I did. Mm -hmm. uh, but when it's a passion project for you and you know you can make a difference to people and you just want to make sure you get everything in place for them, then it, it comes out pretty smoothly. But I'll tell you what, it took me 10 years. Oh to write goodness. the first book. Now, this is the second book, Raving Referrals for Dentists, because what I did was looked at everything we had put in the original Raving Referrals book and said, how do we customize this exclusively for the dental industry? Mm -hmm. How do we help the, both the general practitioners and the specialists attract more new patients to their practice? And you know, they say that 88% of dentists surveyed say that referrals from their patients are the number one source of new business for them. But yet 90% of dental practices don't have a, an automated and formalized referral system in place. So it's a big gap that we're helping to fill. Yeah. I mean, for sure. I mean, I, me just being in dentistry and being in that situation where I know that referrals will make a huge difference. Right. And yeah. like just the awkward conversation of asking for a referral or what, you know, we just didn't have a system in place. So um, what is, can we talk about that? Yeah, let's I, do it. Yeah, I would love to. We we teach in the book. You're going to read this, but one of the things that I love teaching people is the art of the ask, mm -hmm. because so many people feel uncomfortable and awkward when it comes to asking for referrals. And so we've got a three part process that that we teach, and the first part is setting the stage. Okay. In setting the stage, what you're going to do is you don't want to ask somebody for referrals on the spot because that's when it feels uncomfortable yeah. and awkward, right? But if you can set the stage with that new patient and whether that's somebody at your front desk, and, and usually it is, it's typically the office manager or somebody that's, that's managing the, the patient relations as they're onboarding that client and that patient and bringing them into the practice at the end of that conversation, you just say, by the way, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Once we've really proven ourselves to you and we've wowed you with our service and you love your smile and the care that we provide, would it be okay to ask you for referrals later on? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Everybody says yes, because you're not putting them on the spot. You're not asking them for anything other than you're saying, look, I'm going to wow you. We're going to do such a great job that you're going to want to tell everybody about us. And when you set the stage, then you get buy-in from everyone. And now what you've done is you can be on the lookout for referral triggers in that step two. Okay. So referral triggers are like, wow, this was so easy. It was so fast. It was so painless. The last doctor jabbed me three times in my <laughs> gums, but man, you, you made it easy, right? Or this looks so great. I, I feel so good. This was less expensive. Whatever that is, you're looking for an expression of appreciation, a thank you, a wow moment. And really you should be intentional about creating wow moments in your practice. If you don't have those, you got to design them. And we've got some ideas and some recommendations in the book. But once you hear that wow moment, that referral trigger of thank you, now it's time to what my mentor, Mark Victor Hansen, Chicken Soup for the Soul, taught me is ASK to GET. You've got to ask for referrals, but you can automate the ask. Okay. So the way you would do it live in person, and again, this could be the dentist or it could be somebody at, at the front desk. You say, I'm so glad you feel that way, right? They, they tell you what a great smile, they feel so good, whatever it was, they're so grateful. I'm so glad you feel that way. Remember when we said, we're going to wow you with our service? Well, we'd love you to share what we're doing with others and even give us a rating. And so you make it easy when you set the stage, you listen for the referral triggers, and then you ask in a way that is authentic because they've just said, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Yeah. 
I love that. Wow. We've, I've already learned a lot and we're a couple minutes in, but right. like, cool. no, it's awesome. This, the setting the stage. I mean, we talk about this all the time in setting expectations, right. When we're talking right. about treatment plan acceptance or, or payment acceptance, right. And not, right. why not apply that same principle to asking for referrals? I love that idea. One thing, and I'm going to, I'm going to throw a little, I have a question because, and you yeah. may or may not even know if this applies, but so one of the things that you can do with Modento forms is you can totally customize like a new patient form. Yeah. Do you think it would work as well to add like a, you know, can we ask for referrals checkbox like that they've read it in a new patient yeah. form? Or do you think it has to be verbal? Uh, it doesn't have to be verbal. Okay. One of the things that we teach you is to automate the ask because people feel so uncomfortable. You want to auto automate that process throughout your entire patient journey. Okay. Yeah. What does that look like? Because automation is really big to us Yeah. and you want to make it easier. Yeah. So. so number one on your intake form, absolutely. You can create that same sentence and sentiment and, and ask that on your intake form. I would put it at the end. So they've given you their information. And now you would say, you know, something like once we have wowed you with our care and service, mm -hmm. would you be open to referring us to others? right? Share a smile, share that you care. There's all kinds of cute little things that you can <laughs> integrate in as kind of a headline mm -hmm. on that. You don't ask for referrals just flat out. You, mm -hmm. you talk about the fact that you're really passing on good news. They say 90% of humans trust recommendations from people that we know, yeah, right? So absolutely. that's how we're wired. And when you think about it, the reason that we give referrals is we want to help somebody. Mm -hmm. It's all about helping somebody. And so a lot of dentists get he headstrong about it because they think about sales mm -hmm. and they don't realize that sales is really service. And that's one of the things that we do in our coaching and consulting is shift the mindset of everyone within the practice. So back to your question, Katie, the first thing is automating the ask, put that in the, the forms themselves when you're doing the intake. I was just at my dentist last month and, and I mentioned to, I love my dentist, Dr. Hudson in Gilbert, Arizona, does an amazing job. I tell everybody about them. They've got six operatories and they're always full every time I see them. But I was talking to Nikki, the front desk uh, coordinator, office manager. And, and, and I said, Nikki, I love you guys, but you don't ever give me the opportunity to share the love. Like, and, and, you know, you're not asking for referrals. You're not asking for reviews and I would do it, but you're just not asking me. And so it's not part of my, my, you know, mindset. It's not on my radar, so to speak. Yeah. And why she would said, it be for a lot of patients? Yeah. Right, right. No, if you're not asking, you're not getting, that's mm -hmm. the, the, the key here. Right. So she reaches back in the door. She says, Oh, we have those. Let me get one for you. And she pulls them out of her drawer. I said, Nikki, please give those to me. I'm putting him right here where you check out your patients. So again, you're automating the ask. She doesn't even have to ask as long as those cards sit there. When I check out that say, we love referrals. Mm -hmm. right? right. So Build that into your practice. Uh, if you've got an automated, you should be following up with people after the fact and and ask, putting in a review request mm -hmm, process right. into your practice. Mm -hmm. And so that's a great place to, to ask for referrals. Again, you think of the net promoter score. So, you know, if they rate you a four out of five or better, that's somebody to ask for referrals. Okay, great. Is, um, I mean, just with my marketing brain, it's going crazy right now. Um, <laughs> does, do you feel like social media, um, like sharing on social media is the equivalent of like a referral or, or not like, like one-on-one oh, -on -one yeah. referrals? Okay. I'm so glad you went there. This <laughs> is one of the biggest gaps that we see, right? Because you think about social media now you're a marketer, right? So one of the things that we teach about is identifying your referral champions, right? We always teach about influencing the influencers. Do you realize that if you're listening right now, you've got people that have massive social followings that are coming in and sitting in your chair mm -hmm. and you probably don't even realize it. And you're definitely not giving them away to make you famous among their social sphere and, and the neighbors yeah. that they serve. Right. Yeah. So we recommend that you really get to know your patients. You, you think of them as family instead of just as, as cash flow. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you did that, you would know what who the people are that are coming through your practice. You can have your front desk look them up. Mm 
understand what's their income or not, not sorry, not income, but their employment. What's, yes. what do they do for a living, mm -hmm. right? You're going to find some people are natural promoters. Who would that be? Somebody that's in sales, somebody mm -hmm. that's in marketing, maybe they're realtors. I I'm just blown away that people aren't celebrating their realtors. And obviously you've got HIPAA mm -hmm. laws there. You've got to get permission, but mm -hmm. why not ask them if, if we can take a photo of your new smile? Yeah. Orthodontists do this really well. General dentists don't typically. Yeah. Or cosmetic dentists. Yeah, for sure. Or cosmetic. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, I mean, for sure. I, one of the things that, um, but I would have loved to have advocated more when I was doing social media for one, for our practice. And we just, it never got around to it, but if you're listening and you want to take this on, especially with what you've got, what, what, what you're suggesting here, I mean, uh, micro influencers are people that have anywhere from the two to or a hundred to 250 followers or up to, you know, up to 10, but I think we're, we're approaching. So that's pretty much everyone. I mean, if you have an Instagram account or a Facebook, more than likely you have over a hundred followers and those in micro micro influencers have a lot of pull because there's 150 people who've said, yes, I want to follow that person because I like them or I trust them. So right there is, you know, access to 150 people if they just posted it on their social media account. Boom. Yeah. And, and again, yeah. we trust recommendations from people that we know. So when we see that number, number one, it keeps your practice top of mind and you've got to mm -hmm. always get your brand out there. If you're not branding yourself, then somebody else is seeing some yeah. other dentist. Yeah. And sometimes I think people think of influencers as, as someone that does, they do, they do this for a living, but, sure. um, there, it can work just as well with someone who just likes to post occasionally <laughs> to show their those their... who are influential. Yeah. Right? It yeah. doesn't have to be somebody that makes money by posting, but you've got some people that are coming through your doors in your practice and they post all the time. Other people are lurkers, right? They're yeah. voyeurs. They watch, but they don't post. But you can have your front office team doing a little research on Facebook, look them up, look them up on LinkedIn, find out what they do. Maybe they're a business owner, mm -hmm. right? And now their influence grows. Maybe they're, uh, there's so many different, they, they could be a, a leader of a church, they could be a politician, someone that has influence over the local community. Maybe they're out there doing community events. One of the things we're passionate about is for people to be charity champions. And so, mm -hmm. you know, if you're listening right now, they say, let, let me get the stat. I want to get this right. 93% of consumers want to know what you're doing to make a difference in your community. So mm -hmm. number one, your practice should be doing that and making a difference. And number two, you should be partnering with others that are. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, personally, I'm a, I'm a volunteer for big brothers, big sisters. I just <laughs> got to take my little yesterday to the opening of the Super Bowl kickoff weekend. And so <laughs> it was awesome. We got to, he was all excited to go see Patrick yeah. Mahomes on stage. Yeah. And I just created this memory with this kid, right? He's 14 years old. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, anytime you watch a chief's game for the rest of his life, he's going to be thinking about that moment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm an ambassador with big brothers, big sisters. So I'm going to say, if you're not already mentoring somebody, <laughs> you should be. So get in the game, make a difference, but That's make it. a difference with your company. And what it does is it creates what we call a championship culture where you attract talent. Now staff wants to stay because they love the difference that you're making. Mm, yeah. That's awesome. Um, one of the things, and we might've already touched on it, just, uh, on it already, but I want to touch on, and it's something I like to ask a lot is what are some com common like areas of opportunity that you yeah. can think of? Like when you go into a practice to help them with these referrals that you see often that are kind of easy, easy fixes or a quick fix. Absolutely. You know, one of the first things that we do is we teach about a lifetime patient campaign. OK, mm. so oftentimes the only time a practice will communicate with their patients is around recare. They've got a hygiene appointment coming up. And so they're text messaging and there's there's not much communication happening other than those twice a year appointments. Mm. And, and number one, we think that's a big miss. But more importantly, when you have that patient that's coming into your practice, are you asking them about their family? 
Are you asking them about their friends, right? Are you getting involved in their life? And again, find somebody in your office that's high nurturing. One of the things that we do is we teach a personality system called bank code. And what this does is that you really understand your patients and how they're wired. Uh, a lot of doctors and dentists do use DISC or maybe yeah. Colby assessments. Mm -hmm. Those are the two most popular yeah. that we find in dental. But they typically only think about their, their staff, their team members, mm -hmm. right? And that's great. That's a great start. But what about your patients? Do you understand when it comes to case acceptance that you've got some patients that don't want any details at all and others who are like you, Mr. and Mrs. Dentist, that want <laughs> all of the details. They want to mm -hmm. understand the process step by step. They want all the information possible so that they understand the risks and the benefits and they can really think through things deeply. And then yeah. you've got other people that they don't want that at all. They just want to net it out, right? So for yeah. them, you're just going to talk about how great you're going to help them look, how fast and easy and painless it's going to be. We're going to have you in and out of here quick, and it's going to be an awesome experience, okay? Those people are called high action, right? You want to talk to these people very differently. For the nurturing personality, these people, you're going to tap them on the shoulder, Right? You're going to give them the love and ask about their friends and family more so than somebody that is either high blueprint or high knowledge, because these tend to be the introverts. For them, you want to give them all the information that they need to make a wise and informed decision, especially if you're talking about a, a case that is going to involve implants or you know something with a, a larger investment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really good. And I think that um, one thing I've like, we've gone down, I've gone down that road of like trying to figure out what their personality is in the practice. Mm -hmm. Is there a way to make that? It sounds like it's simple. Cause you've got four cards there instead of like a hundred different personalities that I have to decode, <laughs> but also how do you make yeah. it stick? How do you make it like second nature to be understanding that? Cause I think that a lot of practices have tried this and maybe they've, they've tried and they failed or they, yeah. you know. How do you well, get that's why I'm look, I'm a huge fan of DISC and Colby when it mm -hmm. comes to running your business and managing your teams. OK, mm -hmm. I've used DISC for over 10 years now, um, and I think DISC is fantastic, but I don't see it as applicable when it comes to your patients. So what we do is we recommend that on your client intake form that you integrate a system like bank code. Uh, we have a, a special code. You can go to knowyourcode.us if you want to take the, the free personality assessment yourself. And the beauty is that unlike DISC, that typically takes you know 15 to 20 yeah. minutes and your, your brain hurts after you <laughs> answer this long questionnaire and you have to be online to do it, right? Like Katie, if I want to know yeah. your DISC profile, mm -hmm. I got to send you a link, hope that you complete it, and then I get the re the report back, but that whole process could take it could take minutes. Typically, it takes hours or even days, and you've got mm -hmm. a low compliance. Why we love bank code is I can get your your bank code number one. We can integrate those four cards or the values themselves onto an intake form and say which is most like you. And mm -hmm. you can do it in person. I carry these cards with me. I was just in Denver, Colorado. I carry this set of cards, and so when I meet somebody. I can hand them the cards and in 60 seconds, they'll tell me who they are. So it, it works offline in addition to online, but online, you can either bake it into your patient mm -hmm. process. We want to do this so we can serve you better and mm -hmm. save us all time, or you can do it in your, your patient intake form uh, in your office. And then we recommend you color code your files. Right. Mm -hmm. So on the actual files, when you know a patient's coming in, you're going to see the color code and you're going to see, oh, this is an action nurturing blueprint knowledge. We're going to show them the love and we're going to, you know, give them some information, but not overwhelm them with details. That makes it way more applicable, especially if like there's four you add, you know, maybe the on the schedule or the schedule is a certain color, you know, right. or whatever. Um, yeah, and it's yeah, a four sure. digit code. Like it's yeah. literally mine is NABK, nurturing mm -hmm. action blueprint knowledge. And so when you learn the system and it's super mm -hmm. easy, that's one of the things that we do at champion dentists is we teach this and train this mm -hmm. because what it does is it boosts case acceptance. Mm -hmm. It also creates a language within the practice because what happens is the language is so natural 
that people will often say, oh my gosh, you're being so action right now, or you're being such a blueprint. Whereas I've never once said, oh my gosh, you're being so steadiness right now. Like mm-hmm. it just doesn't happen. Yeah. That's funny. I sometimes whenever I take those, I think I'm all of them. I think I have a you're... personality disorder. <laughs> no, th- that's the case. The, the, the truth is, that you are all four codes. So we have an advanced assessment Mm -hmm. and you answer 20 questions and it still doesn't take long, but then you've got a numeric score. This is the quick and easy. This takes like 60 seconds to do. The other one takes about five minutes to really understand what your score on each of those four are. But the reality is you're different personality. You show up differently in different situations. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think it's very, uh, it's an awesome, awesome idea. And if you can implement it, that makes it even easier. I mean, how many times have you presented treatment to somebody who you, you know, you're like word vomiting the same thing and their eyes are like rolled in the back of their head. And they're like, I don't need any of this. Like, why are you talking to me about this? I just want you to tell me what to do. (laughs) We say it's kind of like speaking a different language. If you're not speaking in my language, Mm -hmm. then I don't understand you. It doesn't connect, right? But if you're speaking to the patient in a language that makes sense to them, then you're just Mm -hmm. setting off that like endorphin rush. And they're like, oh my gosh, this person gets me. Yeah, for sure. Do you, do you recommend um, asking for referrals in different ways, depending on their personality? Um, it, it's a really good question. And the, the short answer is no. And okay. yes, but no, not really. You know, the, the truth is once someone trusts you mm-hmm. and once they appreciate the service that you provide, you're going to say the same thing regardless of what code that they are. Mm. Yeah. Cool. But you might do it a little different. Like if I've got somebody that's high nurturing, I'm going to, I'm going to pat them on the shoulder a little bit, right? Cause they like the contact. Mm-hmm. If yeah. somebody's high blueprint or knowledge, man, personal space, I'm not touching their bubble. <laughs> That's me. Don't touch my bubble, <laughs> people. <laughs> oh, well, this has been so fun and so fast. I've learned a lot. I hope I'm sure that our listeners have. Um, and I'm excited for them to get access to the book that came out a couple of days ago. So um, where can they go? to do that. I have a link that I'll share. Uh, I'll, I'll just, uh, it's ravingreferrals.com forward slash dentist. Um, right. You're willing to give a free book to those people. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you can sure go on Amazon. If you want to get like the, um, the digital, the ebook, you can order that on Amazon by the time you listen to this, but we're happy to send you a copy of the book for free. We love dental Intel. So this is just our give to give to them. So yeah, you can go to ravingreferrals.com slash dentists. Yeah. I'll make sure that is it. That is link is in our show notes. I've got your champion dentists.com. Um, oh, talk about this referral score quiz.com. That sounds like an interesting, um, source for them to go to. You know, there's 10 referral best practices. And so this is a super quick, easy, but insightful quiz, because what it does is you're going to rate yourself from one to 10 on the 10 referral best practices. And within two minutes time, you're going to get a report back that shows you how you score. And then you're going to better understand where the gaps are in your referral business. So take a look at referralscorequiz.com. And then the other thing, Katie, that I'll say about champion dentists before Mm -hmm. we get done is, listen, guys, if you're listening right now, you know your calendar drives your cash flow. If you're a dental Intel client, then you understand how important that is. But there are some things that you can do to make sure that those chairs are full and that you're improving your case acceptance as high as possible. One of the things that we do in our assessments to determine if a practice is a good fit for us as a partner is we not only, number one, we use Dental Intel, Katie. So we're actually logging into their PMS and we're looking at their numbers to make sure that we can really drive the needle, right? Because we need to create a big gain. Otherwise, it's not a good game for us. We want to help everybody. And so everyone leaves if they do a profit optimization assessment with us. Everybody's going to get a report. They're going to understand where they can improve their their business. And one of the things that we do besides the dental intel kind of profit optimization report is we do a digital marketing assessment. And what this does is it helps you understand how 
how you're rating and how you're scoring when it comes to uh, your directories. Like, are you listed on all the local directories that you should be? There's mm-hmm. about 70 local websites and search engines and directories that your practice should be listed. So we do an analysis and we determine how are you showing up on those? Are there gaps there that we can help fill? Uh, number two, we look at your ratings and reviews. How many do you have? And how many do the industry leaders in your area have? So you see how you compare. We take a look at your search, your uh, SEO right? How are you showing up online? We take a look at your social media to see how many likes you have and how active are you and what's the engagement. And so we show you this full report so that you can understand exactly where the gaps are and also your website performance, Hmm. right? Some websites are really slow on mobile and you need to know that. You need to know maybe it's coming up on your desktop and every time you check it online, it looks Looks great, (laughs) right? But when your patients or your prospects go to use it, it's slow as a slug. Mm-hmm. So we give everybody a free report to help them understand that's how awesome. they pay when it yeah, comes that's to digital super marketing. helpful. Yeah. Well, it's a really great, great resources. Um, before we let you go, it's I want to ask you the last question that we ask everyone, and I probably have an idea based off of just the type of con- company <laughs> you run. Yeah. Um, but growth is really important to us at dental intelligence because not only it's what we do and talk about all the time, but it also means something different to everyone. Yeah. So what does growth in dentistry mean to you? Well, it's a really good question because I'm going to give you a complex answer because there's Mm -hmm. facets, right? First and foremost, we focus on profit because you're doing your job not only to serve the community, but also because you want to serve your family. Mm -hmm. And so not only increasing the profitability of your practice so that you've got more revenue coming in on the short term, but the long term profitability of your practice and the valuation of your practice. And that's one of the things that we have to really help people think about, because oftentimes they've not really think about what's the value of the practice. If you were to sell today, what's your practice worth? Now, maybe it's only worth a million dollars today. And that's why when we do a, you know, a two year profit optimization engagement and we help people increase their revenue by, you know, 500 or a million dollars, that valuation doubles and triples. And that's the kind of growth that we're excited about. Uh, but along the way, we're going to help you grow as a human being. We teach building a championship culture so that people love working for you, that they love to stay. And you're excited about going into the practice every day. Because we talk to a lot of dentists that don't feel that way, but it's totally possible for you. You just don't know what you don't know and you need somebody to guide you. Awesome. Well, Brandon, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show and we've learned a lot. Thank you so much. We'll make sure that all of those amazing links are in our show notes. For those of you that are not in a place where you can look that up, you can look at the show notes or go to dentalintel.com, um, find our podcast page and and find it there as well. So thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Oh, my pleasure is mine, Katie. Thank <laughs> you. Appreciate you. Yeah. Yep. So great. This has been Growth in Dentistry, a dental intelligence podcast. Uh, and then also thank you to our marketing department, specifically Kat on this. On this. She's such a great little producer. Thank you so much. I am Katie Polson. Keep growing. <laughs>